Water power swallowing, water bottle, don't bother with it. Politicians, politics flowing like it's bottomless. Started it and finished it, water needed to swim in it. More valuable than oil, be careful, homie, you spilling it. Welcome, welcome, beloved community. We are back again with yet another installment of the People's Water Board Coalition's Water Wednesdays webcast. And today we have the pleasure of having a former guest on from across the oceans in the motherland. And I am so happy that we are able to have her back again. As always, I take this journey with my co-host, Valerie Jean. And we'll never forget our behind the scenes tech person, Miss Angelica. And today, people, we have Miss Ruth Yambura back on our show. She is the convener of Ramani, which is the African Ecofeminist Collective. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule to be on our show again, Yambura. We appreciate it, especially with the time difference. So we really, really do appreciate you taking the time to do this. Thank you so much for having me. I just, um, it just occurred to me that the last time we had a conversation was uh, just a few weeks to uh, the World Water Forum in Dakar, Senegal. Um, and at that point, I was part of the global collective that was organizing uh, the alternative World Water Forum. Uh, and now, um, you know, the next World Water Forum is in a few months in May. So there's already work around um, the alternative space. So it's nice to connect um, in between these two major um, meetings, but also in between uh, the organizing work that has taken place um, in that period of time in the last two years around water struggles and water justice, not just here in Kenya, where I'm situated, not just across the continent of Africa, um, but across the world, but also in solidarity with um, our siblings in, in Palestine, because Palestine's um, um, Palestine situation, the occupation in Palestine um, is also about uh, water struggles and politics of sovereignty. So it's really fantastic to be to be back here with both of you and both of the collective um, in the United States. Thank, Thank you. you so much, um, Amber. The, uh, I'm glad that you brought that up because our next show is going to, we're going to be talking about how water is weaponized around the world. And that's um, what's happening, of course, in Palestine is going to be our main focus on that and um, uh, what it, I mean, yeah. So thank you for bringing that up. I'm so grateful that you're here and that we're able to talk about the water struggles happening there in in Kenya. Um, it's a short show, so I'm going to jump right in. But, uh, you know, we're talking about privatizing water, and that's the same kind of conversation that's happening here. Um, it's interesting to me that it's just on a, a global um, conversation about privatizing water all over. Um, so I think this is very, very important for everyone, not just here in the U.S., but all around the world, this conversation. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell our listeners uh, about the government's int intention to privatize water in Kenya? Okay. So I'm actually going to start from not just from privatization. Privatization, it's important for us to remember that privatization is you know, is, a, is, is basically a manifestation of the sickness, and I call it a sickness of capitalism. It's mm. one of the That's ways right. in yeah. which to understand what capitalism is, what privatization of the commons is, you know, the long legacies of enslavement, um, colonialism, and neoliberal politics. So what has basically happened? Um, so we have a new government that came into power. It's not so new now. It came into power in 2022. We had an election in uh, August. The government came to power in um, September. And immediately what happened is that, you know, we had a series of you know, policy changes or recommendations. And to begin with, it's important also for me to say that um, we are facing a serious debt crisis um, in Kenya, mm -hmm. but not just in Kenya. It must be seen within the wider 
continent, you know, since um, 2020, with the onset of um, um, the pandemic, uh, COVID-19, um, many countries, of course, because of the political economy and the economic issues, uh, many countries on the continent of Africa at this particular moment are um, highly indebted. What happened is that, you know, in response to that, um, many countries in Africa, you know, were forced to go to the IMF and the World Bank you know, institutions that I call mm. absolute vultures, you know, they're forced to go to the IMF and World Bank for debt relief. And, you know, as part of IMF World Bank conditionalities um, is that, you know, um, the government had to, was forced to remove subsidies. In fact, just this morning I was reading, there's a headline in the Kenyan newspapers about how the Ke the Kenyan president, you know, the government has been forced to, re to remove basically all forms of subsidies as a condition for um, an IMF loan and the kind of restructuring. And of course, we know what it means when, you know, these condi conditionalities are imposed um, um, on the people. It means that there's forced privatization of public services, uh, you know, this idea mm -hmm. that, you know, water, you know, water, infrastructure, you know, transportation, public, basically public services need to generate a profit instead of seeing them as our right, as commons, as, you know, public utilities, as a good in and of themselves, mm -hmm. that this should not be put mm -hmm. in the scope of we need to make profit right. out of, you know, of trains or buses. So we need to make profit out of water, which of course we know is that the majority, you know, the poor, and it's also very gendered, women, and especially with regard to water, because of social reproduction, because of the kind of, you know, uh, reproductive labor that women, that girls are forced to perform or culturally um, uh, perform. Mm -hmm. It means that when you privatize uh, uh, commons, when you privatize public services, it impacts not just on the community, but it impacts on the most vulnerable, those on the front lines of various intersecting crises, the climate crisis, you know, um, reproductive crisis, you know, economic yes. injustice and crisis in very particular ways. So this is essentially what um, the government of Kenya has been forced to take, to do. So basically what the Kenyan government is proposing, has been proposed in the last one year, including the passing of the privatization uh, bill, which was actually passed a few weeks ago, is it a few, basically two, three months ago, um, the privatization bill, which basically focuses on privatization of um, public entities. Um, it's, it's a wide sweeping uh, bill with really, really great uh, ramifications. So the government basically wants to partner with private entities to basically take over public infrastructure uh, with regard um, to water or basically, um, you know, in the form of public private partnerships, you know, which has basically been the new rage in the last decade, the last 10, 15 years across the world, a total mm -hmm. failure where um, government. Absolutely are forced to guarantee, they basically act as guarantors to private entities. Uh, these private entities are at liberty to give the worst services, you know, to increase the cost of um, um, uh, utilities and public services with no um, ramifications to themselves. Yet, mm -hmm. And know, they don't the care for it when it's left a common? Absolutely. Right. right. Absolutely. Like when so it's left a bit... commons, we care for it. Right. Exactly. Exactly. They don't care for it. So the, Absolutely. So this is what we are seeing. Um, you know, this is basically the mindset um, in, Af in, in, in Kenya. And, you know, just also to expand it, to move it out of Kenya into the rest of the, uh, the continent. Uh, I mean, one of the places where we are told that, you know, we should look to solutions. This is South Africa. Uh, and I talk about South Africa because it, there's a really fantastic movement, the African Water Commons Collective, under the leadership of so many comrades of mine, such as Faiza Meyer, um, Connie Benson, um, you know, and they've really done fantastic political education over the years, you know, around what it actually means to privatize water, what it means to the poor, the working class, what it means in terms of race, in terms of class, you know, the gendered inequalities. But then in a place like South Africa, where you have the legacies of apartheid, you know, what does it actually yeah. mean? Where you find yes. that, you know, uh, people living in, you know, what we call informal set informal settlements, of course, with uh, it's a term that has its own complications. But you find that they pay more for water than a golf course. A golf course where the wealthy, the elite of the elite yes. of society frequent, 
You know, what does it actually mean? And you see that privatization doesn't bring profits to anyone. Um, the labor, you know, in Kenya, quite a number of, uh, there have been labor protests around, you know, those who've been forced to work in, you know, water companies, for example, that are in a PPP type of uh, model. So labor issues, yeah. um, poor services, degraded services, uh, the exorbitant yeah. costs that have gone up. And of course, this PPPs or privatization adds to more debt. That's mm -hmm. something we don't talk about enough. That we're saddled yeah. with even more debt, right? Um, yeah, so that is basically yeah, for years the, down the, the line. Exactly, exactly. So that is basically the, um, the the context that we are part of. But I want to say it's not just water privatization. We are seeing, for example, the rolling back of legislation, uh, you know, legislation around, you know, the criminalize, criminalization of peasant, indigenous seeds, traditional seeds, you know, heavy fines around, around that. So, you know, that's one point in terms of agriculture. We are seeing what, you know, the semi-privatization within the electricity and energy sector has meant also. So it's not just water. It must be seen along a continuum. And that's why I started by saying that it must be seen as particular, you know, the legacies, you know, of colonialism, of enslavement, yeah. neoliberal politics, exactly. and neoliberal globalization, what it has actually meant, you know, concretely and materially, that it is a system, this are systems that are, I like to call them, you know, death giving systems. Instead of life systems, yeah. systems of death. You know, systems what, of yeah. death. Absolutely. All the time. We, exactly, we on the front lines of multiple and intersecting crises are forced to continue shouldering. Yeah. You know, it's interesting when you mentioned the golf course, because that's exactly what happened here in Detroit. They shut off yes. whole neighborhoods at one time. But the golf course that's in the middle of the, right here mm -hmm. on the north end where I'm at, um, they had huge water debt, like $75,000, never got shut off, but they shut off all the neighborhoods around and they it were never because nobody could afford either. their water. <sighs> like, Absolutely. it's stark. I mean, this is a global systematic problem. Yes. Yes. Um, uh, it, you know, the, the, all of the, the systems, <laughs> especially capitalism, <laughs> raping the entire planet. But we've and, even um, experienced And we that see the here. same thing here as far as the corporations being vultures, mm -hmm. right? Like, But we even saw that a few years ago vultures. when we were working on the Detroit. They, yeah. Yeah. We were working on a bill of rights yeah, so wanted to say, for citizens yeah. of Detroit that included transit and everything, and mm -hmm. all of that was trying to be privatized. All of it, still. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. I mean, there was and there's yeah. a lag, I think, in a little bit um, yeah. in the internet. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So actually, wanted to say that they're not just vultures; they create the conditions. Right. So they yeah. destroy yeah. what was working or what could work. Right. What they also do is that limit why, why I like to call it that we must think about right. it within the politics of the commons, because the commons, it basically means that we have a different relationship to one another. We have a di mm -hmm. different relationship to water to biodiversity, right. to the ecosystem. This is what capitalism robs us. You know, this individualistic mm -hmm. model of accumulation and yeah. accumulation and accumulation. So, you know, so it's they create the conditions. And when the systems have collapsed or are collapsing, they come back as vultures because they always yeah. sit. They come and destroy. They stand back, blame the same governments that they have crippled, that they have forced to completely, you know, disinvest from the public, from public uh, goods and public services, and then they come in and mm -hmm. soup again. It's it's literally obscene, whichever way obscene. you look. Obscene. They're usurpers. Yeah, they just come in to extract yes. whatever wealth and basic commons they can from the community, from the 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 earth, from the people, and it just for profit. It's hor It's horrific. Absolutely. It is. Nicole, you had a question. Didn't you have a question? Yes, I did. I wanted to ask, um, Yambra, can you kind of give our viewers like the content, which I think you really already have answered this question on why privatization yeah, is so harmful and so negative for your region? 
So, you know, the continent still has very high levels of inequalities, oppression and exploitation. And I, and, I, and I mean to say exploitation, and I'm being very deliberate about the terminologies that I'm using, because this is a continent that where people were enslaved, millions were enslaved. This is a continent where that was colonized, that was used as a source of yes. raw materials from, for the elite in the global north. And it continues to be a space of extraction. This continent is not, is not poor. It's impoverished, deliberately yes. impoverished by the policies that are forced on us, impoverished by wars, wars that continue, that are actually funded, right, by particular global elite. And so imagine what it means on top of that to actually privatize the little that people have, right? The water you know, the food systems yeah. that we have, right? Yeah. So it, mm -hmm. it, it basically is that we already have so little that we can, that is actually ours, right? Because everything, like, you know, you have a million, it's like a cookie They've jar. They've taken all you the have commons. a million hands yeah. inside the cookie jar that we cannot. We produce the jar, we produce the cookies, Not but cannot even track, access yeah. it because it is on the labor of poor and working class and indigenous peoples on this continent, on the backs of women, on which, you know, global wealth is produced. So basically, uh, privatization continues in the logic of, you know, um, you know, the, the tragedy of the commons, as, um, you know, as we, we are ridiculously told, right? Um, so, you know, what we have is that those you know, the labor of the people who actually produce, right? The poor, the working class, African women, African children, right? Um, are completely removed oh. from the benefits. You know, they're basically, this is their inheritance, the continent, the ecosystems. This is, ba this is basically our yeah. inheritance as Africans, yes. you know? And of course, they're saying that, you know, we inherit, you know, not for ourselves, but for future generations. So we've been completely cut off from our, um, you know, our political, I want, to call it, I want to see it in a very political term. So, you know, privatization, when you look at it, when you look at the level of debt, when you have privatization, you know, you have a, you know, it's, you know, we look at so many countries, so many places across the continent. We already have a debt crisis because of structural adjustment programs that were forced on the continent 40, 50 years, uh, almost 50 years ago. Um, you know, so you have a debt crisis. You know, what privatization does is add onto more debt, um, um, existing debt. What you have is a disconnection from ecosystems right? And basically you become a pauper. And actually it's, it's a form I like to see privatization in terms of a form of enslavement of the people. It really. is. A form Absolutely. of enslavement where, you know, we are told that people are told that, yeah. you know, unless you have money, you can't access water. You know, um, if you don't have money, you can't, uh, uh, you yeah. know, access healthcare. You can't access food. That this rights you know, and not just rights. I don't want to think about them in a very liberal sense of rights because water, you know, I mean, a common, when you think about it in terms of commons, it's, it's beyond a right, right? There's a spiritual element to it, That's right. you know, political element mm -hmm. to it, an economic element to it. This is just not material things, right? And we don't That's think right. about the, just as things. This is people's histories. This is who we yeah. are, our water, our land, our food our seeds, mm -hmm. that kind of disconnection also, we must look at it. Even as we critique the material aspects of privatization, we must think mm -hmm. about it, you know, in terms of, you know, uh, deeper cosmologies of liberation, right. you know, the pluriverses right. of justice, the pluriverses of liberation and the possibilities. And I, I liked it. I was actually reflecting on this just before this conversation. One of the things also that privatization does is that, it works like capitalism works to limit the possibilities of imagination, the liberatory imagination that we could have. Ultimately, that's, right. that's what it does. It tells us that 
every man woman for themselves right work as hard as possible if you if you don't if you don't work hard as possible and you don't have the money to afford all these things then there's something wrong with you no there's something wrong yeah, with the system yeah, no. this is not an individual problem Absolutely. this is not just a technological problem right this is a political right. Economic deli- systems are supposed yes, exactly. to provide for people exactly it's a broken exactly system, exactly a damaged you know system. Absolutely. And I believe that well, and it, it was built on racism. Yes. So that's how absolutely. it's going to run. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's yeah. So we must, also, we must challenge ultimately the logic. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. We must challenge the logic of the market as a great arbiter that's of, right. of rights. Yeah. Right. An everyday challenge capitalism. Yes. <laughs> yes. Every day. Um, what what can people do to get involved and learn more? Mm-hmm. Um, is there is there a place where they can go and they can learn more? Okay, so on the continent, one of the I mean, I'm gonna just give a shout out to a number of places. Um, uh, the Africa Water Commons Collective, as I'd mentioned uh, before, that's doing important work in South Africa, Southern Africa, but increasingly supporting political education and also feminist, popular and political education across the continent um, with regard to water. Um, also, one space that I, I'm now involved in, I'm part of the um, committee, um, the African Water Justice Network, um, um, that basically you know, became... Um, a thing, 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 um, right after the Alternative World Water Forum in Dakar last year. That's a space that I, I would uh, encourage so many Africans, uh, not just whether you're an activist or not, or an organizer or not, uh, but a space, a beautiful learning space, but a beautiful, um, you know, uh, organizing space on the continent around water struggles. Um, That's how we radicalize people. That's how absolutely. we bring them in. Those absolutely. things, it's, uh, they go in, they get some education and put something. I've seen absolutely. it happen so many times. And fire, yeah. fire. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I think one of the things I'd really like to say is that, and I remember us thinking through this uh, at Ramani uh, last year, um, we did a water poster series um, in the lead up to um you know, the Alternative World Water Forum, is to think about water struggles as an intersecting struggle. Yes. We are not going to get free just as water activists. Water is connected to the land. We have to think about Mm cross-movement work and get very, very serious about cross-movement work. Yes. Those working on seed sovereignty, those working on food sovereignty, agrarian struggles. Right. Those working around sovereignty, sovereignty, because we can see what the occupation in Palestine, what it actually tangibly means. We see it also has to be to be, you know, Mm -hmm. work with, you know, anti-war activists. We can see the devastation in Sudan. We can see the devastation in the Democratic Republic of Congo, what it actually means. So it must be, you know, it must also involve labor. Right, it must involve unions, and I feel like we are, we, we are such a such an important juncture, right, in terms of lifting yes. up movements, learning from one another. Because I feel like along the way, especially with the liberal order, we got so comfortable. We, as we say, as us black people say, that we're losing the recipes. We lost the recipes of struggle, right? When you think mm-hmm. about the Black Panthers, for example. The kind of solidarity work they did with Palestine, with you know yeah. movements in you know uh, you know Puerto Rico, for example, the young lords, yeah. the kind of you know radical work that they did. I mean, you think about, for example, Kwame Ture, the kind of solidarity work you know with yeah. the movements, anti-colonial movements um, on the continent. When you think about the Great Nan Aligned uh, movement, right? When you think about you know the movements against you know. Um, you know, the anti-globalization movements and the movements that fought yeah. against, you know, the WTO, you know, the Battle of Seattle. Yes. Where is that power? Where is that organizing? Mm-hmm. Where is mm-hmm. that coming together? Mm-hmm. When you think about women's movements and feminist movements and queer movements, if we do not figure out how to do transnational, transversal work, and if we don't radically think about right. transnational, transversal forms of solidarities, where it's not just about a narrow form of identity politics, but thinking about our political affinity, 
thinking about what are our commonalities in struggle? What are the structures mm -hmm. of exploitation? What are the systems of exploitation? Were we able to think yes. about, yes, I am a black woman in Africa and I experience a very set of particular struggles, but at the same time, not getting so wrapped up in myself and my own struggles that I forget that, you know, you know, as Audrey Lord says, there's no such thing as a single issue struggle because we do not live single That's issue right. lives. That my own, the, yeah. all, the forms of exploitation and oppression that I experience in Nairobi can be connected to the exploitation and the systems in South Africa, you know, in Detroit, I can in think Detroit. about in terms of the yeah. privatization of the rail system in the United Kingdom, thinking myself in Kenya, literally with a, such a serious debt crisis. You know, those of us in Kenya and Ghana have such a serious debt crisis. You know, our ability mm -hmm. to think about what about the movements in Argentina also facing a serious debt crisis. Yes. Thinking about Chile, thinking about Mexico, right? We have to think about that. That, well, that's the kind of organizing and solidarity that is necessary. And also thinking about the liberation of, of Palestine, of West Papua. And right? we're ripe for it now. Like the whole you know, world is ripe for Western, it right now. You know, Western yeah. Sahara, right? This, for this liberation for the Sahrawi people. To think about yes. spaces that are still occupied, facing settler colonialism, facing colonialism. If we do not see our struggles in that form, we are going to be destroyed. Capital yeah, capitalism absolutely. has no borders and has no boundaries. The only borders mm -hmm. and boundaries for us, and especially those of us who are black, people of color, those of us who are queer, absolutely. you know, those of, those of us othered as, you know, others and, and considered disposable by the system. If we do not figure out and quickly, right, yes. how to organize powerfully in such a way, not in narrow, simplistic ways, but in powerful ways, you know, yeah. um, I was reading some work by one of my favorite um, radical um, um, writers, um, Sivanandan, A. Sivanandan, um, you know, and he talks about thinking about our personal struggles, you know, instead of not just like the, the person is political, but the political is personal, being able to have this uh, sort of like a traffic of ideas, right, mm. between you know, different mm -hmm. movements, different sites of exploitation, different forms of, of oppression, but also thinking about the radical possibilities of liberation and solidarity. So I think that is important, right. but also just to finish up on that, you know, um, there, there's such amazing work happening. We're seeing that there's a whole remunicipalization movement happening. You know, we're seeing what's happening in, in, in Barcelona. We've seen remun uh, remunicipalization of water in parts in Ghana and in, um, yeah. um, in Nigeria. And this is because of movements, literal movements, fighting back, because we're not going to go silently into the night. We are not. No. We have always resisted. Absolutely. Our ancestors resisted. Right. We will resist. And everyone else that comes after right. us will continue to resist. You know, resistance is always going to be, to be fertile. So we, we see that. And ultimately, you know, we must reclaim the idea of a commons. And that means challenging the logic of capitalism. We must challenge capitalism. We must challenge the idea every that day. we are disposable, that anyone is disposable. You mm -hmm. know, um, yes. we must challenge yes. that. So I, I, for me, and I always say this, people need to find spaces where they can organize. You have to, mm -hmm. I, I like, I, I'm always like, join a movement, join an organizing space, yeah. read together, do mm -hmm. things together. Because that's the only yeah. way you challenge things. You cannot challenge things sitting by yourself. There's only so much you can do. Right. We have to reclaim ideas of we organize, we read together, we do things together, we support one another. We have to be such an important and giant block, you know. Um, right. You know, we have to be in our millions, as we say, because we are in our millions. We, we are in our billions. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the whole world's ripe for... Um, for that kind of organizing right now. And I do think that it's important that we're sitting together, even if it starts a small group and we just invite mm -hmm. our friends over and we're reading, right? Yes. That's what brought me into the movement. There was a group of folks who were like, hey, you need an education on capitalism. Yes. Right? Yes. You need to understand this. You don't understand yeah. the system. They brought me in, they gave me love. They invited me to dinner and we read books and things. And mm -hmm. here I am 15 years later, still doing this work, still organizing. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, those things are so important. Well, it's so important. so important. That, it's, it's that so education. Important. Yeah, yeah. We must yeah. not give up and on... It's not um, to bring more people in. Yeah. It, yeah. 
it's yeah for us to connect but we also have to train the younger people as well because i think that's Mm -hmm. why i've always been involved in some type of movement is because as you were saying yambra uh, my father was a black panther oh is that me i don't know i don't know there was weird noise it's okay i grew up in that movement arena where it was always something that my father was going to get involved in you know and he always told me like if you don't stand for something you'll fall for anything and i've always kept that at the forefront yeah i i am thankful every day for those people who brought me in for an education yeah i really i maybe i must say something about like again like because this is what ramani has been doing over the last few years but also just the idea of the African Ecofeminist Collective and its founding um, 10 years ago now. Um, political education wow. is very central. You know, Thomas Sankara said, yeah. I'm just going to paraphrase him, that, you know, a soldier with no, you know, you know, political consciousness or education, you know, they're literally, you know, and this is to paraphrase him, you know, they're dangerous. They're literally going to end up like as yeah. a thug. You know, you need to have yeah. an, an understanding mm-hmm. of the system because it is an understanding mm-hmm. of the system that allows you to see how water struggles are, co- are connected to um, um, land struggles, to food struggles, how they're connected yeah. to, you know, criminalization, the prison industrial complex, the military industrial right, complex. Yes. It's These are the tools, mm-hmm. right? We must, but also, of course, not just theory and understanding and education for the sake of it, if it's not used within organizing, because also organizing spaces yeah. are also space sites of education, political education, you know, and creation, co-creation of theory, radical theory. So they must go together. But we cannot abandon. We, we, we cannot, you know, we must understand the system. For you to fight something, you have to understand it. So political education Absolutely. and rooted within organizing spaces and movements. Not just as, you know, in the air, uh, you know, otherwise we become those people who, you know, I mean, we say something in, in, in Kenya, but I think it's something we generally see across the continent is that we become people who talk big English, right? Big English that really does nothing for anyone. Right. We must right. uh, skin in the game, skin in the game always. Yeah. Always. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much um, for this. Yeah, Amber, it's it, it's such an important conversation. It feels so important to me for us to connect all of this Absolutely. and to be able to share it with people. Um, it, it's we we do find we are in in a, in a moment of of I really think global consciousness. Um, not just to take back the climate the, the comments, but to um, to save each other. <laughs> to protect each other yeah. and um i i really hope that and i know that a lot of people are getting radicalized right now and hate absolutely. this you know, it's on the back of the palestinian people absolutely i can but see it are. in real time i i, I literally can see it yeah yeah it's 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 so unfortunate what we're witnessing in palestine um but what i will say is that in i have world. i cannot re- i cannot remember ever seeing the kind of politicization that is happening yes. right now. Yes. Uh, and if nothing else, let Palestine, let the cause of Palestine usher us into a global space of resistance and liberation for every right. single oppressed person yes. um, in the yes. world. Planet. Yeah. Viva That's la right resistance. Right. Absolutely. Right. Viva. Always, always. Hasta la victoria siempre. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much um, for for coming on the show today and spending time with us. Absolutely. I know that you're busy and that you're organizing, and thank you for that work too. I appreciate you. Thank you, Nicole, for always going down this journey with me. Thank um, I'd like to thank the behind the scene tech person, Angelica. You do a great job. We couldn't do this work without you. Absolutely. Um, for all of our listeners, um, in these difficult times, look out for each other, take care of each other, break bread together, and try to stay afloat. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Take good care. Bye bye. Be careful, homie. You spilling it. <laughs>